Uh, so today we're going to be talking a little bit more about ellipses. Now, I had a previous video where we talked about, you know, that ellipses are circles in perspective and that ellipses have two different axes that meet at 90 degrees called a major minor axis. So if we have our little ellipse here, let's see if we draw, draw an ellipse, that um, I like this pencil better, I think. So again, if we went ahead and drew, it, drew an ellipse, and if it's, a, if it's a true ellipse, we could go ahead and cut this in half to find the major minor axis. And it should cut it straight in half. Uh, so this should be the same as that. And that to there should be the south. So this should be the exact middle. Okay. And uh, now this isn't a perfect ellipse. This is a little rounder on this side uh, than this one. And so we could use the quadrants to compare. So this one would open up just to scotch through there. And this side would open up just to scotch through there. You know, so you can use this to check the ellipse's symmetry. So again, we have the major axis and the minor axis. We're going to talk a lot about the major. Maybe we should make that bigger. The major axis versus the minor. That's the major, this is the minor. Um, but let's first talk about what ellipses are not. So um, sometimes it can be when we are drawing it, we're unclear what we're supposed to be doing uh, when, when people say an ellipse, which again is a circle in perspective. Ellipses are not just two, if I took two swings of a compass, I'm going to get something that looks about like that. I'm going to get two arcs. I'm just going to, we're going to have to darken this up. So again, because, uh, so again, let's just say that this right here is my arc. Okay. And this right here is my arc. Okay. So this is not an ellipse. It's just two arcs meeting. And it has points. An ellipse never points. So to make this an ellipse, we'd actually have to cut off quite a bit. So it, and an ellipse always continues to round. So this continues to round, 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 bend back through, and seamlessly round as it rounds into this. So we'd have to cut off all of this to then you know, get the um, ellipse to emerge from this thing, and we'd have to do the same thing on this side. Ellipses do not, uh, they don't point. So that's why if we had a, a um, an almond shape, say this was an, our almond right here, almonds are still too pointy. They don't, they don't round, this is getting too pointy. It's a rounded point perhaps, but it's still not you know, it has to cut off and continue to round all the way through there so that it never points. So that's important to understand is that an ellipse never points. So again, we have to come over here. Same thing, football shapes, not ellipses. They're too pointy. They have a nice, you know, rounded top and bottom, but the side is too pointed. So we'd have to cut it off and to form an ellipse. We'd have to get rid of the point. The other thing that ellipse isn't is it's not a capsule. So uh, if we have something like this, this also is not an ellipse because ellipses are never flat. They're always arcing. Uh, so again, if this was supposed to be an ellipse, we'd have to bring this. So this continues to merge and around and this continues to merge and round and I still got one side that's a little pointer than the other, but this would have to come through here and round off. There we go. It's a little better. And this would have to come over here. So again, we, we'd have to, it'd have to be round. Right now it's a little, this is kind of arcing more than this one, but you understand it would have to continually, it's, it's always round. Okay. Ellipses are always round. Uh, and they should be symmetrical, so this should be the same as that, pretty close. And that's not bad if we actually 
take this and fill that in. Not too bad in the lips. Is it perfect? No, but it's not too bad. Um, so again, we want to we want to be able to make an ellipse that is always round, okay, uh, and never pointed. It never goes flat. So now that doesn't mean that all ellipses are the same. We can have ellipses that are small and tight. In, in an extreme perspective, though, you have to be careful with these because sometimes it's hard not to get little points on the end of them. So you have to, you have to come in sometimes and, and and take off the little. There's just a tiny bit of pointiness to it, so we'd have to, you know, take that off. But um, that's why the smaller ellipses are the more challenging, is because you have to get you have to make sure that it still rounds, so that it is an ellipse, and this needs to come out a little bit of that because it's flattening out so but anyway so uh, you have you know all different types of ellipses sometimes people will draw this actually that's too much that's actually closer to a circle but something like this this is not a circle remember circles have to be as wide as they are tall and if we took this and if we measure it right to left and top to bottom, we will find that it's wider than it is tall. It's still you know, pretty close to symmetrical through here, through there, the right side to left side, top side to bottom side, it's symmetrical or mirrored or pretty close to it. And if that's the case, we're not, if it's not as tall as it is wide, it is not a circle. It's an ellipse, which means a circle in perspective. So this again is still an ellipse, okay, because it is not as tall as it is wide. If it was as tall as it is wide, it would then be a circle. Now this is close to being a circle, but it's still an ellipse because again, it's wider than it is tall. Uh, it's a little asymmetrical on this side, but again, we come over here and we could go ahead and take care of that, you know, make it more symmetrical. Um, so again, and it looks like we've got a little parallax, or in other words, a little distortion on the camera uh, on this thing. And this actually is at 90 degrees. Uh, it's a little bit, you know, to the left of me and kind of off the cam. You know, anyways, it's just a little in distortion to, or in perspective to me. So, uh, but we could go ahead and play with this if we wanted to get these nice and 90 degrees, get these the same on both sides. We could do it, not, not a big deal. But an ellipse never points. That's a no-no. We don't want that. It never goes flat. That's a no-no. We don't want that. We always want ellipses always turning. Now, we're going to talk a little bit more about how to draw an ellipse in a moment using a major minor axis. But I want to show you this. So, and this is basically this. I use this. This is an ellipse template. This is the old school way the draftsman would, would get really nice circles. I mean, if you're doing a mechanical drafting drawing it's got to really you got to really rock that ellipse uh, even more so than a fine artist would or maybe sometimes even more than an illustrator but um this was the old way of doing it and you'd have there's you'd have dozens of these things because you know you would need one for you know this is inch and a half inch and three eighths inch and a quarter inch and an eighth you'd have stuff that was you know would go you know down to you know half inch or you know three eighths of an inch all the way up to you know, almost four inches for these ellipses. And so, you know, you'd buy them, you'd buy them a ton of these. But this shows a nice collection of all the different types of ellipses. These are all ellipses. That's not a circle. Oh, so let me give my finger out of the way. This is not a circle. It's an ellipse because it's not as tall as it is wide. It's like, it's like this one right here. So these are all the types of ellipses. And there's all kinds of ellipses in between these. But these all will give you a good idea of the degree or in other words, how open they are. Certain ellipses are open more, like this one. Certain ellipses are closing down, and certain ellipses are really tight, like this one. Um, we're not going to get into what a, the difference between a 15 degree ellipse and a 60 degree ellipse, but uh, it gives you a nice, a nice selection. If you had this, and you had an ellipse that needed to be this wide, you could, you, you could pretty much, you know, have everything you need. You could select, okay, which one of these is going to work the best for the perspective I'm looking at. If I'm using a, a, an ellipse at 60 degrees, but the actual ellipse is 70 degrees, most people aren't going to be able to know that. Most illustrators couldn't tell you that. Again, there's a little bit of, of uh, variability, thank goodness, 
because if we had to hit everything exact, our eyes are very clumsy. You know, our hands are you know are clumsy. Getting perfect ellipses is very very difficult. Um, so it's a good thing that we had you know these sorts of things. Nowadays people go, oh, I'll just open up Illustrator or I'll open up some other vector program, Corel Draw or something like that, or some other third party, and I'll just draw an ellipse. I'll draw a circle. Uh, which is which is fine, but the other thing is you have to know about ellipses because ellipses are the hardest thing in drawing. Okay, they are the most difficult, especially now. Now this is relatively simple, but when they go into perspective, that means and so these are just all sitting the same, uh, but when you start turning them and twisting them and you know making those those ellipses turn this way and that way and and, or if they're folding over around surface again, they'll do some weird stuff. So uh, we want to be able to, the way we can help us understand how to draw better ellipses, and we'll talk about that later on. But the secret is knowing the major minor axis. Now before we get too much further, I think we should show you how to draw an ellipse using a major minor axis. So let's say, let's say I had the, um, let's go ahead and erase this right through here. Let's say I have the top of a bottle, and on the top of that bottle, I need to draw an ellipse. Okay. So let's say, all right, this is the top of the bottle. And let's say the bottle, this is the very top, like so. This is the side over here. This is the side over here. I'm looking down on the bottle, and I need to put an ellipse here. Now, instead of putting an ellipse, I just chopped off the bottle to make it flat make it a, you know, the top of a rectangle. But we want to turn this into ellipse. Well, the first thing we need is the major axis because that shows the width. Remember, the major axis is the long one. The minor axis is the short one. So if I had this ellipse that was this wide as it turns, it's not going to be getting skinnier this way. It's going to be getting skinnier that way, right? It'll open up or skinny up this direction because this is the side to side. This is the long measurement. And so this right here, th this is supposed to again be the bottle. So the cork would be up here or what have you. Uh, so this would be the major axis. That's the long line. Remember, major just means the long one. Okay, so you've already got two points to make an ellipse. The next thing we would do is go, okay, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and split this in half. Now I eyeballed that. If I, if I was really having some trouble, I could use armature of a rectangle. There's different ways of dividing something. I got lucky on that one. I eyeballed it. It's pretty dang close. It's within a 32nd of an inch, uh, which is more than enough uh, for what we're doing. Um, so now I've got, this will be the short axis or the minor. Now I'm not looking at a particular object, so I'm not seeing the exact perspective. So understand that I'm going to be making some arbitrary decisions, meaning I'm going to make it up. But I can make a very good ellipse. Now this should be 90 degrees. It's pretty close. It's not exact, but it's close to 90 degrees. Um, and the camera looks like it's leaning a little bit more uh, than what it actually is. But it wasn't perfect. That right there is pretty close to... Oh. Actually, no, it's not. Let's see. Let me check this. Let me go ahead and put that right there. Ah, no, it's really close. Okay. So this right here, we'll just thin this up because, you know, it was, it was leaning a little bit. All right. So let's just say, I'm going to go ahead. This is the middle. And I'll say that my, now I'll open up the ellipse a little bit more. Usually an ellipse, you know, when you're sitting down looking at something, it's going to be uh, a little more squished than this depending on a few factors, but we'll open it up just so I can see it. So I'm going to mark, for ease sake, I'm going to mark that point which is the middle and this point which is the distance out and I'm going to bring this up. I'm going to line up that mark with the middle. That mark then shows the distance out and now if I've done this right we've got this distance here is the same from the middle. These two distances are the same. They will be mirrored. If this is in the middle, well then this distance here from the middle and that distance there to the middle should be the same. So it should be mirrored the same distance right to left and then it should be the same distance top to bottom. 
it is not the same distance on the left as it is to the bottom because with an ellipse, there's always a wider side and a shorter side, okay? And it's not the width that, that changes, it's the height. So this is the height. The width will stay the same for this ellipse because it's on a horizontal plane, essentially. We're not going to get a ton into that, but just take my word for it. So again, this is the, the side of a bottle, really big bottle, obviously. And the way we're going to draw this is we're going to take, we're going to take a C curve and put a C curve through there. We're then going to come and put a C curve through there. We're going to go ahead and put a C curve through here. And then we're going to put a C curve through there. Now, I just guessed these C curves. These are not the exact curves, but this is to get my brain into thinking, don't, it's got to be curved. These are more open. These, these, are, or these are, you know, hooking around a little bit quicker. But this is to get my brain to go, let's not make that straight. We, we're getting the brain into the idea of this has got to be curved. Now, this is... Um, close to the curve I need but it's not exact so as I come down and part of this is you'll learn the more you draw ellipses the easier this would become but again this is just to ha help me bank the curve this is to help remind me okay this has got to be curved so it doesn't have you know a lot of times like this C right here is too far open so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to connect to it but I'm going to connect over here which is essentially going to close down that C curve a little bit more because this was just to get my brain to think Curve, 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 curve. Not the exact curve, but just to get it to curve. Turn that corner. Okay. And then once I've got this, this is starting to flatten right through there. So that means this has got to go down as it hits an, into that curve. And it's got to it's it's got to be a tighter curve. This is flattening out too quickly. So that means this has got to come in here and it's got to curve a little more. Again, closing down that C curve a little bit. Because that original C curve was just to get my brain to go, okay, I need to turn it. Oh, yeah, I need to turn it. Oh, by the way, yeah, I need to turn it. That's, that's the whole reason for that was to get our brain just to, to, to remember that, oh, yeah, I've got to bank the curve. Oh, yeah, I've got to bank the curve. i got to zip around and I've got to curve this thing. Okay? So now by using this, I can get a much better ellipse than if I didn't use a major minor axis. And again, with the reason we use the major minor axis is to check symmetry. So I can say, hey, is this arc the same as that one? If it's not, I would change it. Is this arc the same as that one? If it's not, I would change it. Is this curve here the same as that curve there? Now this one, I can already tell it to change because this one pushes right into the line. In fact, it almost goes over it. And this one stops short. This is the line here. This one's stopping short. So that already tells me that it's not going through the point. So we've got to Go ahead and make it hit that point okay but this is how you can use a major minor axis to draw a better ellipse now I could even do it if I was doing some sort of quick ellipse where I'm like okay we got that's the major axis that's the minor axis make sure this is the same nope nope a little better so you go ahead and set that up now this is just an arbitrary ellipse nope it's still too big hold on let's go ahead and measure that Come over here, measure that. Okay, that one was actually right. That one was wrong. Bring this one here. Bring that one about there. Again, we have something where we've set up this ellipse. Now, if I was really comfortable drawing ellipses, I could just go ahead and go, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put my ellipse in there. Whoops. And I, I you know, if I miss my point, I can double check, hey, because uh, it seemed like Maybe it wasn't symmetrical enough. Maybe it was and I'm off. Maybe, you know, but go ahead and put your ellipse in there. And by using a major minor axis, it can just help you very quickly to, to get some better uh, ellipses. And then you can check this for symmetry because this right here looks like it arcs more than that right there. So if that has to push out, and what would, ha what would cause that is if this is not as wide as that. What can also cause it is if this is rounding out tighter, why this is... Uh, so this is open, if this opens up more and this opens up less, that would be an issue. But again, you can use this. So I might say, well, this needs to open up. Or this one needs to close down. You know what I mean? I can, I can go ahead and start to... Now, I can't go too much because if this opens up too much, this thing goes flat. Like that pill. 
and the lips never flatten. So if that's the case, well then we have to come in this way. And maybe this one has to change too, because this seems to be flattening a little bit right through there. Okay, but anyways, we use this major minor axis to help us make better ellipses. And we want to start to be able to recognize the major minor axis. Um, and so if I was, now these are all aligned, but the major minor, minor axis shows us the alignment of an ellipse. If I've got an object that's got an ellipse at an angle, I need to have a major axis that's at an angle. And that means the minor axis would be 90 degrees of that. And that would mean if we marked this off, you know, or whatever, that we would end up with an ellipse that we put on there. And this ellipse is leaning to the left. Okay, and it's because of, you know, the way I set up the major minor axis, I can get an ellipse that's leaning to the left. So with these, it's very simple. To find the major axis, here's what you do. You're going to come to the widest point through the middle, and you're going to mark it like so. And it's got to be at the widest point. And not only that, but it should look, should be right in the middle. Now that one looks like I missed it. That's not in the middle, I don't think. But um, And again, I'm in perspective to this because this is a sitting on a flat surface. Um, but uh, I'll use this. This is this will this will clear it up. That's hitting there. That's hitting there. That's the line. That's the line. Bring this up. Stay, hit that line, and yeah, it's off. Bring that down. So that line's up there. That's the difference. That means I would split that in half. Okay, it wasn't way off, but it was off. So this right here would be the major axis point. It cuts this in, in, in half now, okay? And this would be the, the widest outermost point. And not only that, but it has to split it. Um, let's go ahead and straighten this up, I guess, a little bit. So it should, I was gonna say you have like a bare asthma or something. Um, but if I take this line and I fold this in half, this line should fold down right on top of that line. The major axis is not arbitrary. If I did something like that, that's not the major axis. Because if I fold this on that line, this is going to sort of bump that way. Let me, let's see if we have this over here from the previous lesson. I said, all right, if, got, if I've got an ellipse like so, And this is my, let's just pretend this ellipse is actually symmetrical, shall we? Use it, we're gonna have to use our imagination, I think, on this one, because it's pretty, pretty wonky. But if I said, hey, I'll just connect two points kind of in the middle, is that the, the major axis? And it's not, because if I took this, and if I folded this in half along that line, these don't line up. This is going over to here, you know, because they don't line up because that's not the major axis. If, however, maybe we'll do this with a pen so we can really, really see this. If I did another one like so, say um, this is our, this is just a little bit out of whack, just a scotch, but uh, if we said, all right, well, let's go ahead and draw the major axis, and I said that right there. It's pretty close. It's pretty close. I don't. It's not exact, but it's pretty close. So if this was the major axis, the widest points, and it splits this. So if I folded this over, um, I don't know if you can see this, but this little line. I don't know if we can see through the paper, but this. Probably not, but this little line, uh, if we, you know, look at it, so we won't be able to see it through the paper because this isn't thin enough. I should use tracing paper. But this right here is pretty much the same as that. However, this one right here, 
and that one right there, they are not the same. This is gonna, if I fold this, this bumps over this way because it's not the major axis. Whereas this line actually will trace that line be pretty close because it's the major axis. So it's not arbitrary. So what we have here is if I had all these, these drawn uh, ellipses, well then we, uh, we've, I, you know, that this right here, this right here would be the major axis. Okay, or close to it. That this right here, again, this all, the, the major axis helps show the lean of the ellipse. This is one leaning to the left. That's the major axis. This one over here leans to the right. That right there, thereabouts, I kind of missed that one just a scotch. But the, this one right here, oops. That right there is the major axis. Again, I was close. Um, and it shows the lean. See how that leans? This is standing almost straight up. This would be the major axis. This leans just slightly to the left, right? And this is the major axis here. This is almost, you know, straight horizontally. Okay. So this is uh, the major axis. And again, we can do this with these, or I could do it with a hand-drawn ellipse. If I said, hey, this is my ellipse, this right here, thereabouts, is the major axis of that ellipse. Um, if I said, hey, this is my ellipse over here, whoops, that, was, that one was not good. Let's just say that this right here, they got like three ellipses in there. Let's say this right here is that ellipse, well then, so again, this would be the top of that ellipse through there. This would be that ellipse through there. And then we just cut this in half. So again, that would then be in the major axis. It leans to the right. Okay. So we can do these, um, we can do these by hand. Uh, they don't have to be mechanically done. Um, once we have the major axis, the minor axis is 90 degrees to it. So this right here is pretty close. It's close, but not, it's not exact, but it's pretty close. That's 90 degrees to this. And again, we go ahead and take this. There's the minor axis. There's the minor axis. And there's the minor axis. Okay, so for those taking my class, or for anyone who wants to learn ellipses, um, I would recommend you do pages of these over you know the next six months to a year. Well, you know, sit down, do five minutes of ellipses, and find the major minor axes. For those specifically in my class, I want you to do at least five ellipses that are leaning different directions. Actually, ten in all, but the first five I want you to find the major axis. Okay, so draw the major axis first. And then once you've drawn the major axis, then mark the minor axis. Mark the major axis first on all five and then find the minor. And the minor is the same, it's, half, it's, ha it's in the middle, it's 90 degrees, it's not arbitrary. If I did something like this, that is not the minor axis. The minor axis should be in the middle and not only that, it should be you know, whoops, that's not in the middle, and it's not straight enough, but it should be, you know, if I fold this over, that this will fold down on top of there. This actually looks like it's a little bit over. It's not quite in the middle still. Well, it's close, closer than I thought, but uh, it's off by maybe a 32nd. But again, that would be the minor axis, and again, these are all lined up, so that would be the minor axis on this one, that would be the minor axis on that one. So what I want you to do is on the next five, I want you to visualize the major, and then just draw the minor. That would be about the minor axis. Again, we're looking for a line that divides it in half, so if I folded it, it would fold down right on top of one another. 
This is the minor axis. This is the minor axis. Okay. This right here is, this feels like this should be almost straight up and down. So this right here is, is the minor axis. Okay. As you're looking at ellipses, start looking for the major minor axis because it will help you in intermediate drawing and advanced drawing and it will cure all kinds of issues with your drawing. It will level you up. The better you know how to deal with ellipses, the better your drawing will be. So this has been Kevin McCain with Idaho Art Classes in Kevin McCain Studios. Uh, go ahead and take uh, this, uh, uh, this ellipse exercise Draw out some ellipses by hand. So these were traced. You might say, well, I don't have an ellipse template. You don't have to do an ellipse template. We would just have you draw some different ellipses by hand, all different shapes, whoops, uh, all different sizes. Again, I use my whole arm while I draw these. And are they going to be perfect? No, but again, not a bad ellipse. Uh, when you first draw ellipses, there it's pretty hard. But as you get, after you've drawn 100 ellipses and 200 ellipses and 300 ellipses, you can draw decent ellipses. Uh, and you might say, that sounds like a lot. Well, you, it's not a big deal. You, 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 you do 10 ellipses, a, you know, three times a week. And uh, within, you know, a month, you've done over 100 ellipses. So, you know, go ahead and do that. And then you can just say, hey, am I looking for the, the major axis? That would be the major for that ellipse. Or am I looking for the minor axis? And so I, I would have an ellipse. Let's say we did. Let's do it a little more open. Okay, we have that ellipse. And I'm looking for the line that divides it so I could, you know, fold it over and they would fold down on top of one another. And that looks like the minor axis right through there. Okay. And again, I guess this may be a little bit on the light side, but this right here, if we could darken the ellipse. Is this ellipse coming down through here? And we've got the ellipse coming. I think the, the minor axis is a little bit uh, out of whack. It looks like it needs to be a little straighter. It looks like it's a little bit too much perhaps of a diagonal. Um, or maybe I just flattened my lips as I redrew it. But anyways, it's close enough. We'd say, well, all right, well, it's, it's close, but maybe let's go ahead and, and lighten this. I might say, well, you know, maybe it was a little bit, yeah, that looks just a little bit out of whack. Whereas this right here looks, so it's close, you know. Uh, and again, do we have to do it perfectly? No, we want it enough. So we understand and go, yeah, that's the minor axis. And when you look in the lips, you immediately go, okay, yeah, I can see the minor. And so when you, when you do this enough, whenever you look in the lips, you, you immediately go, yeah, major minor axis. And the reason it becomes so important is because it may help you understand how the ellipse should sit on something. If I had a bottle, and this was the top of my bottle, and I see this all the time, people try to draw, and they will put an ellipse on it like this, and they'll come to me and they go, why does my bottle look weird? And I say, well, is this supposed to be a piece of penne pasta? And they say, no, it's supposed to be that bottle. And I say, well, this is not straight. This is an ellipse that's pointing, I'll use the major right now, at an angle. If that's supposed to be a, like a cylinder, that should be straight. If the, you know, so if it's, if it's a bottle, again, and you're, you're saying, well, it should be straight on there. Well, then, yeah, the major axis should be what? It should be 90 degrees to the side. So if I put an ellipse on there that's like, let's go ahead and make it go through the corners. Instead of breaking outside it, it looks like a bottle cap. Uh, but you can say, all right, I uh, can't hardly see this. It's out of my field of vision almost. But we'll just say that's, that's a decent ellipse. Is it a perfect ellipse? No, not hardly. Uh, but... It's pretty straight. The major axis is still straight. This kind of missed a little bit, so we need to, it's a little asymmetrical, so I could play with it just a bit. But, you know, hopefully you understand, okay, well, this is now, that should touch right there. That should touch right there. Um, we have other videos that talk about doing cylinders and doing cones and anything with an ellipse, and you have to understand the major minor axis. And everything that we draw in the class going forward that has an ellipse, we will talk about the major minor axis. This will help you in ways you cannot even perceive of at this point. It is keys to the kingdom 
for drawing circles and ellipses. I would encourage you to use it. Again, this has been Kevin McCain with Idaho Horror Class and Kevin McCain Studios. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you will try to draw ellipses and think of them using the major minor axis and uh, you know also look for them to not be too pointed or not to be flat and to just do better ellipses and the great thing about ellipses is the more you draw them the better you will get it's that simple practice 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 um, and I've you know I've drawn a considerable amount of ellipses you might be like how, how can I know those aren't the perfect and they aren't perfect and you know but I've done thousands if not tens of thousands of ellipses and I could probably almost ramp maybe even a hundred thousand I don't know um, and obviously I could still practice you know <laughs> but you know I can I can still draw you know a pretty decent ellipse you know by hand when I have to because I've practiced it's just like practicing the piano practicing guitar or drums or anything like that the, the more you practice the better you're gonna be all right so go ahead and give this a shot enjoy um, be more creative. Have yourselves a good day. Bye-bye now.